सूर्यकोटि समप्रभा निर्विघ्न गुरु मे देवा सर्व कार्यु सर्वदा You're listening to 94.3 Radio 1 Maximum Music Maximum Choice My name is MJ Rakesh and I welcome welcome you to One Bengaluru One Music one place where we get your artists singers bands and musicians from across the city who jam up live in our studios every single Sunday between 9 and 10 pm but today in the studios with me someone who's worked in companies such as Relq HP and helped set up Dell India R&D he found his true calling while performing in various bands at workplaces owns a music store a recording studio he's an advisor a teacher at a music school 5 years of it and no turning back since then solo musician Ravi right here in the studios of 94 4.3 Radio One going live with me. Welcome to Radio One, Ravi. Hey, thanks, Rakesh. How Hello, Bengaluru. Doing? I'm good. How are you doing? All right. Now tell me, with the number of companies that you worked in, found your true calling when you were playing with various bands at these workplaces. How and when did you put your foot down? Must have been like a really be doing something related to music even before I started my career back in the 80s. It's just that uh, 80s didn't sound like the right time for me to get into music. I wasn't bold enough, like. the bruce lee manis or the chris avinash uh, you know uh, these guys had something else in them uh, but uh, yes so this was there one thing i realized uh, you know you can't have one leg uh, you know in, in your career and another leg about music if you wanted to take it up seriously yes as a hobby yes i did keep in touch one way was if you're spending half your life in the office you know i would always look for that meeting room which nobody was using and yeah, it is, it's, it's always like managing a wife and a girlfriend together <laughs> you <laughs> it bet. gets difficult <laughs> yeah maybe a couple of girlfriends together <laughs> that's how tough it is <laughs> okay yeah. all right so then, yeah so uh, fortunately or unfortunately i i think at every place that i worked nobody stopped me uh, or my colleagues from doing our thing uh, so in every place we did have a space where we could keep some of our instruments not have to carry it every day to work and all that so that way kept in touch i would say kept that little fire burning and uh, but i was very clear that uh, the urge was getting stronger and you know from the beginning i've not been like a cover musician uh, it's been more about original tunes and original music and i pretty soon realized that just getting a few hours on the weekend or anything like that was not going to work out so then i was praying you know what happens in india is you get married and then there is it's unlike the western world where you know you have a lot more freedom to choose what you want to do uh, partly because you know there's self imposed rules here you are responsible for your parents your family and so on so forth it's not like when the kids are 18 you forget about them that doesn't happen you get happen. married you get a certificate of being uh, sentenced for life <laughs> <laughs> in some some cases it's a nice sentence <laughs> yeah you're saying that only because your wife is sitting here and she is she is filming this entire thing <laughs> you don't want to go on like that you know you know something yes. our engagement when it happened it happened at, at my house and uh, the engagement ceremony lasted about half an hour After that, there was a music event for about two hours, <laughs> <laughs> informal event okay. uh, where Gayatri, uh, you know, there was a veena at home. My sister used to play, so Gayatri has been learning the veena like typical South Indian girls. You know, they are either learning vocals or learning some instrument. So she was fortunate to learn the veena during her childhood, and so she played, I played. I think whoever was, uh, you know, singing or playing something at that point in time, they all performed on that day. that was that so was pretty like good a bandstand for everybody absolutely yeah? so okay. th- that was good because it meant that you know your life partner also appreciates music and it's not like i was a professional musician so uh, as long as you know there is some support in the house so at workplace there's support at home there is support i guess that keeps the fire burning okay when and how did that moment come to you where you said okay fine this is where i'm going to send my final email and i'm going to put my papers down and i'm going to pursue this for life So what made you do that Actually the process started at home because you know more than convincing um, uh, you know people at the workplace it's more at home Th- there's a lot of uh, stuff you got to prepare for one is the huge drop in income it is you can't expect that if you take up uh, you know uh, in anything it's not just music if you decide to become a painter full time or you want to take up uh, cookery as a full time profession you can't expect that you're going to get revenues from that immediately and we all come from typical middle class background where you know you don't have a nest egg somewhere and you can just 
say, you know, go and do your own thing. So the planning starts, I would say, five to eight years prior, which is go take care of your liabilities and stuff like that, and then you take the call. Then it was, you know, when it, the, the switch didn't happen from, uh, you know, 100 to zero and then start again. Yes, I had a back plan B, a plan C uh, to keep that revenue stream going, which is maybe I should spend some time doing some, uh, you know, corporate training and so on. So took that route. Teaching was definitely one of the first things that I wanted to do for two reasons. One is I felt that would help me develop. And that is something that I'm not going to stop forever. Because one is revenue, yes. But the other thing is you keep meeting with newer students and they come up with new questions. And that helps you go back and think. So It's like hitting the refresh button in your head every now and then. Every now and then. Yeah, yeah if you don't hit it, somebody else is doing it. Okay, so fantastic. I'm kind of guessing at the end of all this, Ravi is like a well-planned musician. Yeah? There are many musicians look. who played by the year. There are many musicians who happen by accident. There are many musicians who become what they become because of instinct. But you're like a well-planned musician, Well-planned, right? low risk. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. Even now, it's five years. Uh, it's taken me five years to produce an output that I can hold in my hands. And that was because it's been in startup mode all through. So the priorities did not change. Yes, the goal has been smart, but I kept telling myself if I waited, uh, you know, X number of years to get that output, uh, let it wait for another few months. I'm glad, I'm glad you think the way you think only with music and you didn't think about this with your marriage and having kids. Otherwise, <laughs> it would have taken ages and decades for you. <laughs> yeah, if, if you delay that too long, you may never have kids. Yes. <laughs> so. All right, we're quickly going to go into your music and come back and talk to you about what kind of music you make. Tell me firstly, which song do you want to play on the show? I'd love to start with the fun song in this, which is called Carom on Strings. Okay, and, and what's uh, this Carom. about? So, Carom Board. We, we all grew up playing this game. And, we still do. Uh, yeah. yeah, we still do. Yeah, we have one at home. So, uh, don't get time to play it though. <laughs> so, the thing is, uh, it's a fun song because there's no story attached to this. And uh, it's more like, uh, it, it came out of the way the guitar was played when I was creating and writing this music. So, that's how it started off. Fantastic. Let's listen to your music and then come back and talk about it more. This is Ravi, a solo musician right here in the studios of 94.3 Radio 1, going live with me, MJ Rakesh on. One Bengaluru, one music. One Bengaluru, one music. 94.3 Radio 1 94.3 94.3 a self-taught musician shifted gears and direction after a couple of decades in the IT industry. Today, creating new, original music and collaborating with accomplished musicians in the circuit. Solo musician Ravi, right here in the studios of 94.3 Radio 1, going live with me, MJ Rakesh, on One Bengaluru, One Music. So, Ravi, now tell me about your sound of music. Why this genre, the, the genre that you're playing right now? Why this one? If you were to listen to, you know, uh, the tracks in the album, uh, you would probably discover multiple genres all interwoven. In some cases, the genres are spread across the tracks. In some cases, you'll find multiple genres in the same track. Uh, that's a question that I've not been able to answer when people have asked me. But to be honest, I never, th I don't think about genres. Uh, it's, it's what happens with the flow. Uh, sometimes it's an idea that comes and then it builds up. And sometimes the idea is linked to a thought. In which case, what I do is, just so that I come to a logical conclusion, uh, I build up a story and then keep the storyline to guide me with the sound that I want. So, uh, that's how my music comes about. Now, influences, why is it, uh, you know, genre independent and so on is because I probably grew up listening, listening to, to a whole, genres, lot of, yeah? whole lot of music. I mean, uh, Indian music, film music, non-film Carnatic music. Uh, Hindustani, whatever was playing on the radio. In fact, I'm probably, uh, l you know, uh, lucky enough to belong to that generation that grew up when there was no TV but radio was there. And then the TV came and the MTV and stuff came. And then we got radio back, right? So uh, I guess we were listening to more music when radios were around than when they were not around. And you were concentrating on the music. 
So today you can, you got, if you have, if some of the videos that I see, if I were to shut my eyes and listen to the music, then I feel like change the channel. So, you know, it's very rare cases where you find that the video and the audio appeal to you. Like they say, video kill the radio star. But I'm glad the return of the radio is here. Strong and you yeah. can't watch. You have to listen to radio when you're driving and with the traffic that we have, I think radio is a savior. I think it keeps a lot of people sane on the road. Okay, so coming back to your genre, so you're a multi-genre person. Or rather you play genre that sounds good to your mind at the time when you're creating music. Yes. Yeah? That's, that's how we would understand. So you would have acoustic, you would have blues, jazz, you might have some little bit of western classics, you might have rock, all these influences coming together into your music. Absolutely. Yeah? yeah. Fantastic. But what is the underlying objective of you creating the music? It should sound good, obviously. The melody. Melody. Melody yeah. is the underlying. I feel like if you strip, music for me is a number of sounds layered one top of the other. And if I were to strip away each layer, like, you know, if I'm peeling an onion, uh, remove it, right at the underneath, uh, the last layer, there should be some distinct melody line that can be hummed. So that's the soul of your music. That's, yeah. So, uh, melody is the yeah, soul of your music. That's, that's something Fantastic. I, Any formal training where you get the melody creation out of? Or is just, no. what is your inspiration to create this melody? Just the year. Just the year? I thought you'd say your wife. <laughs> the music. I mean, all the heavy metal stuff happens. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't say acid rock and heavy metal. You just said heavy metal. Jokes apart, I need dinner today. Or probably, so. Af or probably African tribal for that matter. She will throw the camera at you. <laughs> Alright, now tell me, how do you compose your music? When you sit down, what's the process like? Where do you start, where do you end? So it starts uh, with the acoustic guitar. And uh, it, it can be sometimes I'm just Riffs. lying down, okay. uh, the guitar in the hand, and, and the fingers just do some stuff. And if I find that uh, what I'm hearing to myself is something that I like to hear the next day, then I latch on to that and, uh, and it starts. And then what I do is now that I have a little studio of my own, uh, if I'm pretty serious about that idea, then I go ahead and record a dummy track capture that idea uh, you know and, and it reaches a point where I might even put a, a kind of a simple rhythm to it and then I build it up so that becomes the skeleton but then I try to come up with the the overall uh, structure you know where there is an intro a body and stuff and you know by the, by the time I would have thought of the the storyline or what's driving me in that direction so that's kind of how it happens in many cases the ideas are born like, uh, you know, my son has been playing the keyboard from a very young age um, and then he picked up uh, guitar and he kind of does a lot of stuff. So if there's somebody that I've jammed with a lot over the years, that's him. So many a time, I would say not in the recent years, in the past, you know, if we get into a jamming mode, a lot of ideas are born out of that. So uh, there have been a complete songs coming out like in 10 minutes. Oh, okay. Ten minutes. So, uh, in fact, uh, there are some tracks in this album which were born out of that uh, kind of a jam session that happened. So, I, I love the extempore. So, a, a lot of my solos are single takes done on the spot uh, and played on the spot. So, I, I, I'm more of a spontaneous uh, player than a person who... I figured that when you said that there's no formal training that you come from. Yeah. You're a self-taught musician, so yeah. I'm, 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 I'm sure you're more a musician who plays it by the year. Yes. As much as you've planned the business of this entire music before <laughs> you got into it, but when you're a musician, you're a very spontaneous, natural, yes. instinctive yes. musician. Fantastic. Moving ahead, tell me which is the next track you want to play on the show. Mm, something that I hold very dear to me. Uh, this is uh, a tribute to a classmate of mine from the college days. Uh, it's called the Ode to Gopes. Lovely thought. Let's bring this on. Ravi, right here in the studios of 94.3 Radio 1. Going live with me, MJ Rakesh on. One Bengaluru, one music. School of Music turning five years, it's been growing largely by word of mouth. In spite of keeping a low profile, for him it's not about scale, it's about quality. 
And he's hitting the right note with that musician and a teacher, Ravi, right here in the studios of 94.3 Radio 1, going live with me, MJ Rakesh, on One Bengaluru, One Music. So, Ravi, tell me a little more about your album. Yeah, I, I can see it right here in front of me. It's called Windswept. Tell me a little more about this al album. So, Windswept uh, happens to be the name of the title track as well. But, uh, you know, when, when the thought came that, yes, uh, you know, I, I, I think I need to put these tracks together, put them as an album and then make it available for more people to hear. The I thought back as to, you know, what has been, you know, one of the major guiding forces or influences on me as a human and I realized that I kind of like to take uh, the years or the months you know on a one-on-one -on -one basis as in yes I do a lot of forward planning but then I realized that as humans we may think that we are getting into a secure position let's say we say that we want to earn this much money or I need to own a house yes but you know, in reality we are very, very small when we compare ourselves to the environment. And even if we shut ourselves up in the house, we can't prevent an earthquake. So we are that vulnerable. So the, the point is... Given the point, I kind, of, I kind of get it. What you, I kind of get what you're saying. I, I Over the last couple of months, I've been pondering over this. Mm -hmm. They usually say uh, that you spend so much of your time planning for tomorrow and thinking about tomorrow and making your tomorrow better that when tomorrow comes you're doing it for another tomorrow yes so you're constantly doing for the future and kind of losing out on the present absolutely yeah absolutely so i'm guessing it's in the same school of thought that we're coming from absolutely you yeah. you you hit the nail right? <laughs> okay so the point is now i i kind of looked at uh, a typical paraglider this guy takes a leap uh, from the edge of the cliff and he's got the paragliding equipment uh, so, and he's got a few basic controls. He can control the direction to some extent, but largely he's in the control of the environment. Environment, now, the wind. Yeah, and he, he chose to take that paraglider rather than a single engine plane, uh, which he can drive and accelerate and so on. But the benefit is he's enjoying that ride. He's going where the wind is taking him, and therein comes the unpredictability, and therein comes the quote of surprises. And you can choose to crib when you are in situations like that where you don't have enough facilities or you could choose to enjoy what you have and take it as it comes so the view from the top you can choose to enjoy it or you can crib somebody to say that you promised me something with an engine but you didn't so the choice is ours so that's the story behind wind sweat uh, and I, I look at it as so like for me music it is maybe 10 years from now it may not be music as a full time it may be music as a part time and some other uh, interesting stuff so I look at it as we all have one life and what do we want to do with that one life? Go and taste a lot of stuff, check and see what potential we have, are we exploring that potential to the fullest? Basically you know in your 90s, I am optimistic, I will live beyond 90. When you are in the 90s, you shouldn't think back and say I wish I had done this, I wish I had done that. No regrets to be left. Yeah? Absolutely. Go try it. But then with some planning. You know, that's where I find some people, I'm not saying that I'm good at it, but with some planning, you can achieve a lot of stuff. A lot of people are impulsive when it comes to trying to chase yeah. their passion. Yeah. But when you do it with a little bit of method in it, you kind of enjoy your passion at the same time also secure your moves. Absolutely. Yeah? Fantastic. Instrumental conversations. So you're trying to talk to us with your music in the album. That's what it means. Partly that. Partly, to be very honest. Narrating uh, stories. I am less of a lyrics influence person and more of a tune melody driven person uh, yes I used to sing when I was a kid in school I was extremely shy during my school days uh, part of the reason was I would see people you know when they're talking to uh, somebody or listening to some music think oh this is music in this language they switch the top or they switch the channel for me music is music if I'm listening to Turkish music, Indian music, music from anywhere in the world, if it is connecting with you, then it is music. So I found lyrics was one thing that people were either getting switched off or switched on. Kannada music, oh, what's wrong? There's some excellent Kannada music that I grew up listening to. Tamil, Malayalam, you name it. So I figured that if I'm going to make my own music, it's going to be instrumental so that more people, if they choose to listen to it, they'll probably connect with that music.
I don't want them to switch it off just because it was in a particular language. That's where it is. So, it is a dialogue between instruments. That's where the conversations came in. And I look at it as a project. So, uh, to the earlier question that you asked, I look at this as a project. And I hope to, this album probably has m me to a large extent in it. And I have a few other people who contributed to the sound. But going forward, I would like to collaborate with a lot of other musicians who have heard, I have been inspired by many, and I hope to collaborate, and I hope to become good enough for them to think of collaborating with me. Fantastic. So, that's Brilliant. where it is. Moving on, tell me which is the next track you want to play on the show. Since we talked about Raga School, uh, my wife uh, Gayatri, she actually helps run this school now. because I, uh, you know, And uh, this is a song, it's called Introspection. And we did a lot of this in the last few years. Uh, so this song was written, uh, you know, keeping in mind, like when we are introspecting, we are looking at, you know, this side and that side. Both so to reflect the uh, these two sides, you know, I've been on guitar. Gayatri accompanied me on Veena on this. So introspection is what comes to mind. Fantastic. Fantastic. Let's bring it on then. This is our solo musician Ravi right here in the studios of 94.3 Radio 1 going live with me only on One Bengaluru, One Music. One Bengaluru, One Music. Online partner, TommyJams.com. Oh. Radio 1 94.3 94.3 Kya yeah, his music store which happened in 2009 followed by a recording studio in 2012 he recorded his first instrumental album Windswept with compositions written over a period of time between now and 1987 musician and teacher Ravi right here in the studios of 94.3 Radio 1 going live with me MJ Rakesh on One Bengaluru One Music so tell me Ravi a little more about your Raga school of music that you have started off tell me a little more about the school like I said uh Teaching is something that I started doing when I switched my career and I would definitely do it uh, as long as I can. Um, so the school started with just me teaching people how to play the guitar. Um, so like we discussed, I'm a self-taught person. I am a, I'm an impatient person as well. So you know, while it took me a long time to gain some level of control on the instrument, I've been always looking at how can I share the knowledge to people who would like to learn it in a hurry. So I came up with my own curriculum, which so is what is like teach. the T20 version of learning the guitar. You could say that. <laughs> you could say that. You could say that. Because one one thing that we do in the school is encourage people to leave the school as soon as they can. <laughs> Have you heard of that model? <laughs> encourage to leave your school as soon as, as they soon can. As soon as possible. Not the school that they are in, right? Uh, not the school that they are in. <laughs> you bet. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Yeah. So the idea is this. Get to the point where you can teach yourself. That's the underlying philosophy with which we teach. Fantastic. The thing is, learning never stops. There's a lot of stuff I know I can't do even today. Right? When I see people like Konara Gredi perform or a, a lot of... I keep taking up people that I'm inspired with. I mean, I don't... I think much before we talk about people outside India, there's a lot of good talent here. So anyway, uh, so that's the uh, philosophy with which the teaching happens. Over the years, it's teaching them to teach themselves. Get to the point where they can. Okay. So the focus again is we don't teach them how to play songs. We teach them how to gain control over the instrument. It's because I cannot assume that X, Y, Z when they come to join, that this person likes Karnatic, this person like Hindustani, this person will like Western. And for me, an instrument is an instrument. You can play whatever you want, depending. It's something like if I'm a writer. I get a piece of uh, paper and pen, I can write fiction, I can write uh, poetry, I can write whatever I want. So for me, instruments are just a medium of expressing yourself. So therefore, I figured that I need to teach people how to play the instrument, not teach them song after song after song. Then there's no end. It's like, uh, you know, the old uh, adage, which is teach a person to fish or give them fish. So that's kind of how it goes. But over the years, we've added uh, keyboard, uh, stroke, piano. A uh, good friend of mine, a very uh, talented chap, he's been uh, helping out, uh, take care of those classes. We also have drums. And uh, yeah, I mean, we're not looking at scaling it up. A lot of people, uh, uh, people who knew me and the family, and imagine that in within a year's time, we would open more branches and so on. But that was not the objective. Even now, that's not the objective. Even now, people have been asking like, 
why don't you you know branch start out. branch out and the thing is the focus or the the driving factor has been music if i choose to branch out and do a lot of that stuff i'm going to be spending a lot more time doing that as it is i waited a long time to you you'll get more into the administration of the entire Delhi. thing than into Delhi. executing yeah. what you have maybe if i come across the right set of uh, people uh, form a team and they are interested to take things forward yes can but that's not been the object fantastic now tell me where is the school located so we are based in south of bangalore in jp nagar area so the school the store the studio all of which is housed in the same uh, building We're very and, close uh, to the Brigade Millennium. And, and the music classes happen across the day. Um, most of the evenings, and if it's the mornings, it's on the weekends. But they kind of spread out. Fantastic. Now, how does one get in touch with you to uh, enroll themselves into these classes? Well, Raga School of Music. If you were to Google it, you will come across uh, information about the school. We are there on Facebook, Raga School of Music, Bangalore. There is a blog that I started off, but. I've not been doing a good job of keeping it up to date. Okay. But yeah, Facebook page is a good uh, thing, and uh, we have the contact details and so on there. People walk in or. They, yes. Interesting. Moving on, tell me which is the next track you want to play. So uh, yeah, this is called Reflections of Alamelu, and okay. uh, this is a track that's dedicated to my mother. And uh, the the thing about this track is. when we say so her name was sarvaja but officially it's alamelu and that's why it's called reflections it's it's kind of how i saw her and uh, you know she comes from a typical south indian family but we were up north for many years and then we moved to bangalore and settled down here as a result she got exposed to different cultures she was a fusion of multiple cultures and uh, that is what i hope you know comes through in the reflections of alamelu song the other highlight has been i was extremely fortunate enough to get a little bit of sound from every single member in the family including my dad gayatri has played the veena in it my dad has played a little bit of morsing my brother contributed with a little bit on the guitar my sister lent her voice so did my sister in law so in that sense i feel very satisfied because it's ended up being a true tribute this is like a family track It's like your family anthem. <laughs> I was telling somebody that apart outside of the Michael Jackson family I don't think so many members of family contributed to a single song. But jokes apart it is something that is pretty special, special to us. Fantastic. Fantastic. Let's bring it on then. This is our solo musician teacher advisor Ravi right here in the studios of 94.3 Radio 1 going live with me MJ Rakesh on One Bengaluru One Music.